Praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's been a wonderful time together that we are meditating from the Word of God, especially this subject actually caught many people's attention. Nice response for this series, especially. <laughs> yeah. Um, the it's not about see i never go by this quantification of this viewer statistics and all that seriously <laughs> if nobody watches no problem i'll still pray for them if many people watch no problem again but then i'll feel very happy that yeah people listened yeah they got an opportunity to hear the word of god coming from the throne of god yeah um but nothing stops me nothing makes a difference in me but i'll feel very happy yeah. same same would be the attitude of god right he feels very happy when you pay attention to the word of god and when your life changes when, through the application of these principles yeah you will realize the value of life in you yeah and uh, that's very important for you to understand why it's important for us to understand is Using the same Bible, the devil is able to fool us, deceive us, mislead us, lead us into temptations, justify from the word of God, oh, all is well, this is not wrong, this is, this is okay, that is okay and all that. Have you heard something like that? Many, many times I've gone through that situation. Dilemma. Not able to decide good or bad. Bible says like this, but is it exactly good or bad or in between these two? Hey, there is nothing between good and bad. It's either good or bad. All good comes from our God. All his plans for you and me are go uh, from God are for our good and not for evil. Jeremiah 29, 11 and 12 says that. Uh, Romans 8, 28 says that. That he, he makes all things work together for our good. Yeah. Okay. So, a warm welcome to this... Um, uh, uh, you know the serious group of evil groups of evil spirit that deceive the mankind. Yeah, and uh, anyway, uh, we had been talking through this for almost eight episodes. This is our eighth episode, eighth episode. Sorry, and uh, we had been talking through various types of spirits like deep sleep spirit, tormenting spirit, uh, what else? Unclean spirit, foul spirit, and um, a lot of spirits. Right, the spirit of antichrist is what we are. Uh, dealing right now and why the spirit of antichrist supersedes any other spirit is yeah um, <clears throat> any other spirit is because the antichrist is the one who's going to come yet to come but he will come for sure and he will take that supreme form the predominant form the dominance and that's why this Antichrist spirit actually rules over other spirits. In fact, the Antichrist spirit is the one will dictate to the other spirits saying, hey, go and do this, go and do that. And he's like a governor, right? And this Antichrist spirit is the one playing key role in Christendom among in the midst of Christians. Why? Simple reason. We are the targets to the devil. Hey, those that are on the devil side, you think devil even will pay his attention or spend his point, not, not, not. One percentage of his time. No, he won't waste his time. See, one thing that you and I can learn from the devil is he doesn't waste a single microsecond on earth. Yeah, we have all the time to waste. No time to pray. What were you doing? At work. Some people are jobless. Still, they don't have time to pray. Why? I'm in depression. Huh? Really? You're still breathing. <laughs> How would you get well? How would you get a new job? Tell me. Yeah, this is what, you know, we have learned together from the word of God. So in the last couple of sessions, we had been talking through various case studies, King Saul from the life of Judas Iscariot, King Jeroboam, and likewise, we also touched upon various uh, theological concepts like uh, ecumenicalism, Catholicism, and uh, denominationalism, right? Married together, they gave birth to ecumenicalism and syncretism and uh, Baha'i faith, which leads towards a lot of festival celebrations. All these things you will see in the Christendom today. Too much of importance to festivals than ever before. Too many people gathering for every single uh, celebration. Even Pentecost Day, there is a lot of attention. St. Peter's feast and Mary feast and this feast and that feast. You will see a lot of people being scattered in multiple directions and 
I would say they are all moving away from the word of God. Because why? Show me any of these in the word of God. Fellowship is there in the word of God. But in the name of fellowship, you see how the devil had misled the world. Yeah. Fellowship is predominantly reserved for prayer meetings, discussion in the word of God, not argument in the word of God. Different. There is a difference between argument. Yeah. A Pentecostal brother talking to a Jehovah witness, a Jehovah witness talking to a uh, Baptist uh, brother, Baptist brothers are talking to Seventh Adventists. Seventh Adventists talking to a Catholic brother, a Catholic brother talking to a CSI brother, a CSI brother talking to a uh, whatever Pentecost brother. They all fight like dogs. Have you been there any time? I've never been there. Hmm. Why? By choice. No one can force me. I would say, sorry, you're the winner. Go ahead. Go ahead. You are the winner. You win here and you will win, win there in hell, not in heaven. Hmm. If you have an arguing spirit, if you have a forcing spirit, if you have a fighting spirit with your brother, that's not from God. That's clearly from Antichrist spirit. Why? Because he will transform you as busy bodies. Busy bodies. They get into all this businesses of other people. Hey, what are you doing? Do you know this dress is good or not? You know this is not good. And what is your problem? Mind your own business. The same Bible says. Yeah, if they're very, very close to you, yeah, tell them once and then leave it there. Don't keep on nudging them, poking your nose inside their business. And I saw your husband somewhere there. And why are you telling this? You understand what I'm saying? So all these spirits are the ones which misleads people, taking them into the side of distraction, defocusing them from the actual destiny, from their actual goal, defocusing them, defocusing them. You understand? And uh, the more you get defocused, the more you get distracted. The more you get distracted, the more you move away from the word of God. Bible says, James 4a, draw yourself nearer to God and he will draw nearer to you. How is this drawing nearer? Huh? Do you don't even know where God is. You do, do you know his home? It's heaven. Nobody knows except the son Jesus. So how do you draw yourself? Even if you got to know, can you catch a rocket or a flight and go all the way there? No, you cannot. It's very simple, beloved. You don't have to go in search of God. Why? Because he is living right inside of you and me. His name is Holy Spirit. And all that you do according to the leading of the Holy Spirit, he brings to your remembrance all that Jesus taught and spoke from the word of God, John 14, 26. And if you're able to do it, I'll tell you what, you'll definitely get God's attention. You're already on God's side and God is on your side. You are in Father and Father in you, as Jesus said. Yeah. People looking at you, they will look at Christ. They will look at Christ-like mindset that is in you. They will look at the reflection of Christ-like attitude and behavior that is reigning in you. You don't have to go and advertise, I'm a believer in Jesus. They will see a difference. They will see that you are unique, you are distinct. You are not just the same like other people in the world. And that will attract brothers. That's what attracted people towards Jesus. He never went on voting campaign. Hey, I'm going to stand for election. Please vote for me. Vote for me. Vote for me. He turned around at some point in James chapter, sorry, John chapter 7. Hey, are you still there? You also want to go along with those people when he said, those who shall not eat in my, uh, take part in my drinking my blood and eat my flesh. They have no part in me. People went away and he turned around and he saw only his apostles were there. Then he said, hey, you also want to go, go, no problem. He was not after number or crowd. But the same Bible witnesses that uh, the crowd thronged on him. Thronging means what, you know, one from the behind is trying to climb on Jesus. One toddler trying to pull him by the hem of garment. Other one catching by his beard and trying to kiss him. And uh, all the ladies are catching him by his hand. They know he's holy. Yeah, they don't have. And he's not a person who will definitely not be uh, not on the side of lust and all that. And all were thronging wherever. And Jesus Never refrains. His, his disciples and apostles were overreacting. Hey, leave the uh, leader alone and all that. But Jesus said, hey, don't rebuke anyone. I love them. I came, I've come here to love people. Show my love. Reveal my love. How did this happen? Did Jesus went and make any propaganda? Hey, I'm going to start a new religion called as Christianity. Please come and join. <laughs> it was a reflection of God's love in him that attracted people. Likewise, it's a reflection of Jesus' love and teachings and preachings in us will be the one which will take you to the side of light. You will be the person who will lead others to light and you will also walk in light. And wherever there is darkness, for example, a home which is filled with darkness, what? Poverty, stickiness, sickness, job loss, divorce, death, curse, bondage, everything. You go there, you, they will see that illumination, illuminating light. 
they will see something is illuminating something is igniting some spark is bringing that fire in their home how because they see jesus in you simple you will be an empathizer sometimes you know to some people i i seen i say nothing of jesus i only go and do my job what what was the job to help them yeah help them help them physically or economically or something like that and they say yeah, yeah truly your god is god your jesus is exclusive i have heard people saying that i would never speak anything unless asked them unless asked let the people come me come and ask to me uh, people come to me and ask who is jesus and all that then let me explain you understand you force on somebody it's conviction bible doesn't talk about conviction sorry somebody involved in religious convictions hey we are not for it why because it's not from the bible that's from the devil you cannot force some people to accept christ no but they see christ in you and they accept you forcing comes from the devil yeah the gentle leading comes from the spirit spirit is so gentle you know right holy spirit is gentle and he leads you gently and you ignore him you neglect you reject ah uh, you ignore and all that he will not come and force himself on you fine but he will be grieved in his spirit bible says in ephesians 4:30 and what else um romans 8:26 the grieving and groaning heart he cries for you and me and prays and intercedes like was jesus also he does the same sitting there intercession you understand now why am i saying all of this is because if you are a person who's being led by antichrist spirit you will never be involved in any of these good qualities that i had been explaining over the past few minutes okay and uh, and you will be also a person who's very busy and distracted and all that and i also gave you a little bit of sneak peek on the distractions which we spoke in the previous sessions and we spoke from jesus perspective who said depart from me workers of iniquity and all that matthew john third john philippians all this we discussed right so when you look at the church today and compare it to what the apostles preached in acts and epistles which jesus which gospel and which spirit they pretty much answered all of these questions and which is also beautifully explained in the book of matthew chapter 13 through various parables jesus explains hey matthew 13 is a very 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 special chapter i am going to Uh, give you a glance of uh, what is being uh, what is being spoken there right and i'm going to give you a certain uh, spiritual explanations too we will spend some time right together from the book of uh, matthew 13 and i'm go- also going to tell you how you can classify yourself what kind of spirit is reigning in you is it holy spirit or is antichrist spirit anything and everything that you do against not only this matthew 13 where a bunch of parables are packaged and presented by our dear brother matthew yeah what a wonderful uh, representation of all the parables being put together yeah i'm going to take you through all the parables not not uh, in detail but then we will touch upon that why because the more you read the parables you will be able to see every parable will have an end result what is the resultant of any parable resultant of any parable is dividing between good and bad <laughs> Jesus came to this world to bring division. Say hey, one of the sisters commented in my uh, in our channel and uh, she said, "Hey, Jesus came to bring division." Because I was telling the Holy Spirit brings division. He divides and rules. He uh, among the brothers, I think the my, the sister misunderstood. Yes, this is approved by Jesus. Jesus brings division. Correct. Jesus brings division, but he doesn't want us to be divided. amongst the brothers and sisters right those who are like minded in christ you are not supposed to be divided you are supposed to have fellowship you got to be united because why same bible ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 to 4 talks about walking in unity and unification so i think it was misunderstood the perspective i told versus what the perspective that sister took was little different right yeah i i definitely agree jesus came to bring division to divide the wheat from the tares or weeds understand clear yeah but then once he has divided the wheat uh, he doesn't want to again divide the wheat <laughs> right so wheat is nothing but a symbolization of uh, the christendom and the church and the believers in christ we are all supposed to be united that's why paul also said hey uh, you are the people who are dividing me and apollos but me and apollos are united in christ why because we are for the same mission we are for the same goal and objective and it's not from apollos or paul it's from our lord jesus who died for us 
by whose blood we are sanctified okay that's good for an explanation so um, when, uh, we are going to go through one one after the other parables but when, as we go through the parables in matthew 13 you are we are going to talk much from the perspective of um, the uh, evil spirit that is uh, uh, the antichrist spirit especially versus the holy spirit so if you were of the antichrist spirit how you will be ending up on the side of doing everything incorrectly bad side i mean to say and but, uh, rather you are going to you are going to be led by the spirit or you are a person who is alive in the spirit and walking in the spirit according to 1 peter 16 1 peter 1 16 then uh, you are on the good side right good side where jesus divides the wheat on the right hand side and the tars on the left hand side likewise jesus divides the sheep on the right hand side and the goats on the left hand side goats are known for distraction moving away from the voice of the good shepherd likewise the sheep always known for obedient walking by the side of the good shepherd yeah, i'm just giving an example so we are going through these parables uh, it's a very it's going to be a very tight session so we will see how best to cover so to so to start with right uh, the parable of the sower parable of the sower everybody knows that the seeds are going to be uh, uh, sown by the uh, by the by the farmer in the same way as how we sow every seed but there are few seeds that gives 100 fold and uh, 60 fold 30 fold and some don't even you know uh, sprung up why because uh, jesus is very clearly explaining they fell among the thorns and they fell among the rocks and stuff like that and then he explains uh, i'm not i'm not going to get into the details of the parables but then we are going to talk from the perspective of um the antichrist how he plays that role right specifically um <clears throat> jesus says right um here the parable of the sower from verse number 19 if you see and he was uh, the seed on the stony place is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy yet he has no root in himself yeah that's a point to note here what is this root in himself the root in himself is nothing but he wants to accept the word of god but he is deep focused and he's not in a position to concentrate enough you understand this concentrate enough um no root in himself in the sense because of this lack of concentration because for example you sow a seed and you don't water it properly or you sow a seed and people are for example you sow a seed near the um near an untidy place where people come and urinate urinating on the streets is quite common in india but these days it has improved but not drastically uh, yeah or otherwise the best uh, example would be you sow a seed right inside the ditch there are gutters running and a lot of garbage uh, collecting channels running and you just sow a seed in that what happens it's carried away by the ditch water and then forget it it gets decayed and decomposed finished right so why because it doesn't have the root <clears throat> it doesn't have the enough minerals it doesn't have enough um, what is say nobody takes takes good care of that seed and therefore it's not having the root to grow similarly those that read the word of god having their mind attention concentration on somewhere else for example you had a bad day at workplace and i would suggest please do not read the word of god when your mind is disturbed instead you can praise and worship you can ask god to fill you with the holy spirit anointing give you that calm spirit according to proverbs 17 27 yeah instill thy calm spirit in me yeah come to that calmness immediately don't open a bible and start to read it like why nothing enters into your head it's useless it's just a waste of time just another number <laughs> and what happens now who's bringing the distraction who's keeping your mind occupied with worries and not even worries keeping keeping your mind occupied with something else it could be a worry it could be a fear it could be you had a very i mean it, it's other way around also right you had a very good potting time you had a very good successful day and all that probably your heart is so marrying and you're you're all thinking about you're, you're thinking about all those who praised you that day and all that and reading bible what will enter into your head nothing enter, enters into your head <clears throat> understand no root and this is also the wile of the devil and especially antichrist spirit i kept telling you from the beginning he has that art 
He has the talent. He has the skill to defocus you and me. Always distract us. That's how he distracted Eve. You understand? Speaking all unnecessary things. And then one fine day he captured her. It took around like 30 to 35 years for him to go through this consistent process of talking to her each day. You won't believe. Many of the scribes, they have discovered this. They are calculating the age uh, of Adam from the time he was chased out of Eden Garden. <clears throat> For when tribulation or <clears throat> persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. That's another reason, but I didn't want to only talk about troubles and persecution. It could be the pleasures of the world. That's also come, going to come in the form of trouble. What do you think? Troubles are not always going to lead you towards poverty, strickenness and uh, sickness and all that. Yeah, uh, the troubles are going to hit the people of God even in the form of worldly pleasures. It could be anything. A new car that you bought, you're always busy driving the car. No time for prayer. <laughs> God who gave you the car, you've forgotten, but you're always washing the car and taking good care. Ooh, what are you? It's also a form of a tribulation. It's also a form of a distraction, a persecution from the devil. Yeah. But because of the word, that is the catch here. Let's read Bible always carefully. Because of the word in the sense, when we read the word of God, many people get carried away into a lot of scary things. That's where you really need to understand. Pick the right church. If your pastor is going to uh, teach you Bible in a way that he's telling you horror stories and this and that, uh, you know, devil, how he comes in. Some people, they always keep glorifying devil more than God. Then people may ask me, brother, what are you doing for eight episodes? Hey, I'm not glorifying devil. I'm telling you, he's defeated on the cross, but do not take him lightly. If you take him lightly, then you too def get defeated <laughs> by him. Yeah. He's been given certain powers that we should always accept and agree, but he's not more powerful than you and me. Why? Because we have been given the anointing of the Holy Ghost, great reason within our standards in this world. Understand the powers in the name of Jesus and we receive resurrection power in the name of Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 1 to 10, 1 Corinthians 12, 1 to 11, 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Yeah. And 1 John 4, 4. I'm giving you references. There is no reason for, uh, you know, f uh, to get scared or frightened. But at the same time, you can't take him lightly. Yeah. We need to have that balance in understanding. <clears throat> no root in himself for these many reasons why all these things can be encompassed into one word distractions distractions or defocus if you're defocused you're distracted with the worries of the world or the pleasures of the world you're finished i'm telling you and that's the immediate tool or weapon the instrument that the devil takes in his hand always especially against the children of god and next now he who received the seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. Two different aspects again. Both of them are from the devil again and especially the antichrist spirit. This is also another form of distraction. Yeah. Cares of the world in the sense, what am I going to do for me? It's not worries of the world. It's the cares of the world. I need to take care of my uh, vehicle insurance, I need to take care of my health insurance, I need to take care of my parents, my daughter, what will I do for her marriage and the daughter would be just born. He is already thinking what's going to happen 25 years later. It's good to plan. I'm also I'm also for it. But yeah, your planning is one percentage. 99 percentage is nothing but God's divine will and plan and leading and grace and mercy. You know, everything else constitutes for the remaining 99 percent that's from God. Of course, I'm not saying without your one percent, it's just not hundred percent yet. Huh? It's ninety nine percent only. Why? Because God always works in partnership. And never think that you know. Many people preach it other way. Ninety nine percent of efforts from God, one percent of uh, you know God's grace. No, no, it's other way around. Ninety nine percent, it's God's mercy, grace. It's His favor. Yeah, that's what helps you and me to march ahead in life. Okay, now the cares of the world and the deceitful of richness, choke the deceitfulness, what? Being misled, always. Just now the guy would have got a new home. Immediately he is thinking about buying another home. This home is not good, brother. If it is not good, then why did you buy? Yeah, where were you? You sold your, you sold your brains when you were planning for uh, the new home. And that too, the home is in loan. Imagine. 
no brother actually uh, this kitchen no it's just not uh, well structured and all that brother that's why bible says in another parable that a person who got to build his house first of all he must plan how much money he has and what kind of house he needs whether he can buy it or not whether he can build it or not all this planning you don't do you're you're into this you're 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 in deception deceitfulness of riches some people are one 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 aspect the other another aspect is some people are always spend trips they buy a new home immediately buying another extended add on loan for interiors and all that what is the hurry first of all pay the loan for all your walls and roof and all that no huh? then let us go for uh, interiors and then once you are done with interiors and go for another loan and all that see i am not against loan many 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 preachers say no loan you uh, you know the children of god can only uh, lend but not borrow and all that correct but not before you capitalize things right so you need that initial support from an external agency but then that is also something you need to plan well why because when you get loan when you take loan you should have some mortgage assets if something goes wrong you're able to repay it your whole family is not been endangered and take loan in not in splendid measures lavishly no smaller measures take one leap at a time beloved like frog one leap at a time what is the hurry a uh, deceitfulness of riches people may say many things man you have such a good job man you handful of salary this and that and all one recession in of your job is gone your house is also gone the bank fellow will come and keep ringing your bell and then he, next time he is not going to ring bell he is going to break the door and come and throw you out of your home yeah they confiscate your property and this and that and or they what is it what is that they um, i forgot they auction they auction your property and they take the money yeah sad very sad to hear such stories from many many christian brothers and sisters and all this is called as deceitfulness you understand we started with seed and who is all behind be, be, behind all of this who is there anti christ spirit always defocusing uh, not allowing you to concentrate not allowing you to plan well you don't plan well why because you didn't concentrate well hmm but he who received the seed on the good soil you know he who hears the word and understands it who indeed bears fruit understands that is what you need to circle in your bible when i used to be a college student and a school student i used to observe certain outstanding students very very sharp and uh, very i would say very good in scoring marks when i met couple of them and i asked them hey what makes you special man <laughs> they say one thing they focus on they we focus in the class and whatever the teachers uh, you know teachers we just listen and that's it i to started focusing then it did make a difference but yeah there is an iq level right little bit of genetics little bit of <laughs> dna is involved but uh, but i did see the difference i start to follow that method focus on the teacher focus on what he says and yeah you don't understand ask questions let the teacher explain again and yes you are able to get the marks it makes a difference it did make a difference of course i didn't i was not able to score 100 out of 100 but at least i was scoring in 70s then it becomes 80s it's, it's it it did make a difference understanding perseverance skills very very important bible talks consistently about persevering skill perseverance skills and that's why jesus uses the word hey those who shall those who have ears let them hear here here means what you all have big ears no some people's ears are like elephant ears yet they don't hear anything okay so it's not about the size of your ears it's about your concentration capacity it's about your willingness to learn understand that's why many guys you know they are duds and uh, what is a uh, very very lazy so why they are dud because they are lazy they are sluggards it's not that they don't have iq or intelligence or same um, size of the brain that you and i have <clears throat> they do have <clears throat> they don't have some metal head inside which it's filled with clay nothing like that they do have the same system human system why is it some children are performing so well in schools versus some of the students distracted man teacher is saying something this guy is looking at some 
yeah adult pictures and this and that and they get caught and they bring bring parents and they get nicely beaten up and all that and twice they commit the same problem and they are dismissed from the school forget it man that's it putting an end to their academics over game is over what a sad situation right and that's where i always keep telling you this um you know have that focus have that attention because the devil's number one job is to defocus the children of god don't have enough time so let's move on to the next parable why am i saying all this the wiles of the devil doesn't come in the form of a image with all tanned face and ah, frightening mouth and all that no man no it's all about mind games i keep telling you this mind games did they distracting your mind or filling your mind with some nonsense which is least important which must not enter into your head but can you have a filter in your mind yes it's possible the filter is nothing but the word of god the laws and commandments of god the instructions left behind by jesus if you're able to instill that filter instill that filter filter coffee this day i mean the olden days uh, they they used to go to what is olden days means what 30 35 years ago i remember they used to go to some shop and get that uh, what is that that bean bean right coffee bean and they powder it and grind it and big process they add some little bit of uh, chicory or something like that and uh, then they all homemade only and then they kind of filter it out and uh, there is a filter <clears throat> take the tigashin and then they mix it with milk and all it is it's it has a different taste ultimately it is so so nice outstanding you don't get such coffees nowadays then what happened is they powdered it and uh, you know brook bond is one famous company they powdered it and they started selling what is say the coffee powder like that and then you still have to go through the filtering process but that bean process is overcome one process is uh what is a uh, decremented then they came up a few years later instant coffee instant coffee means what food fine powder all that you need to do is take and just you know add one half spoon of uh, uh, that coffee powder into your milk and just stir it properly and uh, that's it uh, your coffee is ready which means what they simplified it even further two more uh, the first step number one step number two decremented only one step just take your spoon st- you know add some coffee powder instant coffee powder <clears throat> no filtering nothing is needed and that has a different taste altogether but you don't get that orthodox that that traditional authentic taste they call it as right you don't get it you understand don't find shortcuts and get into this instant coffee method yeah and it's not good for health there are many discoveries it's not good for your health you know, they add a lot of uh, i don't know what ingredients that are harmful that's what the discovery says but uh, but all of us got used to that instant coffee authentic method has gone our bible is always an authentic book do not take shortcuts do not look for Uh, you know the instant coffee method and instant replies from god also no he will reply in his time he will reply in his due time in a season and this itself could be the wile of the devil why because he will make you more impatient and when you are impatient any decision you take will be exactly opposite to the lord's will and divine plan i can bet my life <laughs> why because i have gone through that idiotic and stupidity act of stupidity many many times in my life not patient enough not able to wait in the feet of the lord my agent i squeeze into his hands and say that you know god do this for me no then i learned learned perseverance skills learned from the word of god no wait on the lord he knows man he you have no idea my brother my sister about your future do you know what happens the very next microsecond forget about next hour next day next year people think too much too far forget about everything next microsecond next microsecond tick tock tick tock not even second one second has got 60 microseconds to it or next microsecond do you know what happens you do not know right then why do you make all decisions all of them are going to be mere waste of time useless leave it to god in prayer yeah but students listening to me leave it to god in prayer i'm not going to study then god also will leave you into the hands of the devil and the dev- you know what the percentage the devil gets you it'll be in minus you want even zero at least as a value but he will get you 
marks and minus he will make you the most um Yeah, one incompetent uh, person um, in all the places where we go i know many people in my own family in my own relative circle family in the sense in blood relations right some of my nephews and nieces and cousins i've seen them ruining their life don't want to name them With all due respect i say this i'm really concerned i pray for them asking for one thing oh god please deliver them from the clutches of the evil spirit the parable of wheat and the tares my time is running huh? parable of wheat and the tar similar thing yeah but when when the grain is sprouted and no um i'm reading from matthew 13 25 but while men slept his enemy came and sowed tear among the wheat and went his way what is this sometimes in the dreams in dreams and visions we have done a very good series all of them they are available in the channel you people don't open up your ears or eyes to listen then what can i do tell me how can i help you how can god help us forget about me you think i am the one who is doing all this no man my brother my sister it is god the father actually i am also a learner i am also a student like you yeah when you are sleeping the devil is able to corrupt your mind frighten you how many times yesterday also i had a dream yeah sometimes a lustful dream a very beautiful woman i hope my wife is not listening to this <laughs> i was just joking right oh dreams are not in your control but many people say hey this is illusion illusion whatever you had gone through in your life and all that and uh, no, I, i i was a sinful man yes i went through all this as my hormones were changing and all that every teenager listening to me you go through it i go through it college life you go through it and all that is deep in your brains or heart or memory the devil digs it up all the bad memories he digs it up including lust greed for money lust for sex uh some of the fights you had some of the violent ideas you had yeah to kill somebody and all that you can't do it because you will be caught by the law and jailed but you had the desire no he will bring all those violence in your heart and all that and suddenly you will wake up and you will start sweating and all that or or some sometimes he frightens you threatens you next day you're going to pick a new job and he threatens you all this is nothing but sowing tars in the mind of a believer but when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop the tares also appeared as you are proceeding ahead with your good works that you learn from the bible the tares is also following you what the thoughts no that 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 memory the thoughts in your memory will never vanish trust me some 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 if some pastors are telling you when you come to jesus he erases the memory and they quote verses like hebrews 8 12 oh your sins i remember no more see god erased no that likewise he will erase god did not erase he says i will remember it no more he did not say i forgot or did god erase no it will still come to his mind whenever he looks at you and me the sins of the past but he makes an effort why because you and i have accepted the name of jesus as lord of lords and king of kings and you and i are cleansed by the blood of jesus remission of sins took place and god the father honors hmm? that's a big difference big difference Are you all understanding but the memory stays yeah as you are doing involved in the good works or the memory comes and chokes you chokes you. in the name of jesus you resist the devil bible says in james 4 7 many people don't even understand this resisting the devil means of what you know resisting the bad memories the bad thoughts the frightening thoughts the doubtfulness in your mind you don't trust god something that shakes your confidence in god resist the devil it's of the evil spirit it's from the evil spirit ha huh? from where else it could be tars yeah but he said no yeah an enemy has done this the servant said do you want us to go and gather them up no lest while you gather up the tars you also uproot the wheat with them now this is a different first perspective is that the second perspective is there are a lot of tars being shown in the midst of the christendom watch out in the midst of your workplace in the midst of your families watch out and you 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 secure yourself as that you you continue to uh, produce a good uh, outcome or you know 100 fold and 200 fold you don't become one of those tars important thing preserve your soul protect your soul resisting the devil and don't focus on the tars because why god is already taking care of the tars he had a, he has a plan <laughs> the white throne judgment is going to really really make them pay a price are you 
going through some sort of harassments in families mother in law daughter in law fights and father in law son i have never heard father in law son in law fight too much i don't know uh, you know men are really magnanimous now the ladies are staring at me <laughs> i don't know man sorry i i never had heard much of men fighting but ladies yes they always get into fights i do not know uh, that's where you need to learn from the life of sister ruth and sister uh, navami uh, how well they had that bonding uh, wonderful wonderful to see read and understand okay yeah are you going through some sort of harassment huh don't focus too much you see how my mother in law is as mother in law says you see how my daughter in law is as you don't have to see each other forget it you know that she is arising now forget it why because she is going to be taken care by the lord but then do not count them as your enemy and curse them yeah god has reserved a place for you in hell you will be the first one burning in the lake of fire because why you're cursing in the same mouth you praise god you cannot curse especially your mother in law you can't do it I mean, well applies to mother in law too you cannot do that to your daughter in law forget it yes these days what even the parents are cursing their children you know you have such a big headache nuisance and when parents get older this guy takes good revenge of them or teaches them such a good lesson what all you did to me now i am going to throw you out of my home get lost that's why many parents you know they don't sign in that property document you know after my death you take it something like that they are also very wise these days <laughs> sorry i have to talk too much no <laughs> yeah see how people have to protect themselves from these tars <laughs> or tares whatever you call it as t a r e s ha huh? wiles of the devil beloved protect yourself Pre- preserve your soul and don't hurt other people be a good role model worst case please admonish and leave them aside do not count them as your enemy second thessalonians 3 14 to 15 says this yeah well i don't have time to explain the other parables um, but the parable of tares jesus also explains it very clearly the enemy who sowed them is the devil the harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are the angels verse number 39 matthew 13 39 see jesus also said the same thing the enemy who sowed such things is the devil and not only through dreams through various circumstances you go through you plan for something he brings a he brings his agent you know a lot of people have dedicated their body mind soul and spirit to the devil no they will do everything that the devil tells all of a sudden some guy will from, from government will come and say hey stop the construction man why you can't do this uh, then bible says do not bribe well, how do i resolve this problem this is the kind of struggle huh? the guy strictly wants a bribe but he won't ask it directly according to this uh, blueprint this is not right uh, deviation is uh, 20% allowed here it's i see 30% deviation <laughs> hmm? how do you prove it's 20% or 30% all that he wants is some money but bible says do not bribe what do you do you understand no huh? hmm? tares are being sent by sent by the devil he is the one who sows that he is the one who creates it so what prayer is the only only way I'm not I'm not saying I have never bribed I've bribed unknowingly I've bribed <clears throat> without a solution I bribed <clears throat> and I'm sorry I have said sorry to God many times yeah without a choice what do I do but the moment I said sorry and I had gone through the repentance God miraculously did many many things through good people he sent not only in construction but many other government work we did without bribing anyone seriously i'm telling you the truth but i was an immature christian i was a fair weather christian <clears throat> seasonal christian doing things according to my own laws and commandments yes i was a sinner i agree nothing moves in india without a bribe you understand so that's one aspect and likewise many many hustles and obstacles he brings in your life and my life and he put he pushes us to a corner where we are not able to uh, overcome Uh, without violating the laws and commandments how is this yeah you overcome but through this violations of <laughs> laws and commandments you're not an overcomer you're a demon you understand hey you overcome violating all that jesus spoke and taught then obviously you have a different bible and it's written by the devil you understand all right so with that we close and uh, yeah may god bless you I think today's session was very very useful from Matthew 13 we discussed 
and uh, we learned many aspects as how we could uh, stay away from the from those stars and or resist the stars and and not become one of those yeah that's very important heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful explanation we appreciate your grace mercies please lead us by your side in jesus name we pray please subscribe to our channel get access to all our playlists do not miss on any videos it's only for your growth spiritual growth right we don't we don't we don't talk anything like here that pulls you backward no <laughs> those that are deprived downtrodden hopeless depressed yeah this is your channel this is your channel you're welcome and please share these details with your near ones dear ones and it's your duty and responsibility to share the word of god right you are supposed to walk in light and be a blessing to others if you don't do that you have to give an account and you won't be able to settle that account so you better settle it now here on earth god bless you and continue to remember me and our ministries in your prayers and yeah meet you soon thank you very much for your time god bless